Beloved, sorry about getting cut off there. So we were discussing how when the Lord has me out on the campus, the university, or different places, um, sometimes he, um, he will remind me of scriptures as I'm reading one scripture and then another scripture will come to mind. Uh, that's the mind of Christ whenever you're hearing the Spirit, which is part of what we have on our armor of God, as Ephesians 6 says, the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Um, and so he'll remind me of multiple scriptures that go along with this one, confirming um, multiple times what he is speaking, what he is trying to trying to bring forth. And so in 1 Corinthians um, chapter chapters 1, uh, or what? five and six, we were talking about how through one through five was talking about the temple of God. And then he was talking about someone was fornicating um, with his father's wife. Read all of it so that you get, you know, context and everything yourself. And then he talks about in, in chapter five, verse six, the leaven, um, right after he talks about the temple of the living God in chapter three, which temple you are and how you're holy. And prior to that, he was talking about how we're all one in chapters one, in the one faith, one hope, one spirit, one body. And so that we are all um, one and that we have gotten saved by the same name, Jesus Christ, and sanctified by the same spirit. And we're in the same body, which is the son of man, Jesus Christ, who resurrected from the dead, quickened by the spirit of the living God. And so we being quickened by the spirit of the living God, sanctified by God. Um, following Jesus in the regeneration, belief, um, faith in him. In this discussion of the temple of God and how holy you are, and then he's talking about, you know, there's leaven, all right, within this Corinthian church and fornication. And he's talking about having his father's wife, which we know that in other chapters, and he talks about the leaven in other chapters. Jesus, whenever he was walking, he said, you know, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Um, he talked about um, old leaven. He talked about old wineskins. So you can kind of get an understanding of what he's speaking here. Now, we're not saying that he didn't, you know, one of the church members had his father's wife. We're saying, which is possible that it, that was what was going on. But it's interesting that he first starts out talking about the temple of God and then about this fornication that's happening in the church. And right after that, he talks about the leaven and the old leaven of malice and wickedness. So we know that in Israel, God was the husbandman of Israel in the Old Testament. We know in Matthew 23, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And then he talks to his, his um, apostles and he says, no, beware of the Pharisees, the leaven of the Pharisees. So when you're reading 1 Corinthians um, chapters uh, 5 through 6, and even prior to that, 3, you're talking about the temple of God and then about fornicating with this father's wife. So a husbandman of Israel is the is the is what we would consider the father, and Israel the woman of God. And so the woman in Matthew 23 was God, was, Jesus was calling the serpents, and he was saying, you know, that they were the harlot, basically. He was like in the Old Testament, the, the prophets called Israel a harlot. In Revelation chapter 17, Jesus calls Israel a harlot again. So, and in uh, Matthew 23, he says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. So when you're looking at Revelation 17, you see who the harlot is. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. There's no question about it. So in 1 Corinthians, he's talking about how these people are fornicating Okay, and they have someone there that is bringing leaven into the the church, which I believe he's giving us information because they had malice and wickedness against Jesus to the point that they killed him and the saints who believed in Jesus and they killed him, them. So in chapter five, verse 13, he says, but them that are without. So then he starts talking about those that are without. And in Revelation Chapter 20, 22, verse 15, he's talking about those that are without. These are talking about people that are not born again, beloved. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 15, those that are without. So when you're seeing in chapter 5, verse 13 of 1 Corinthians, he says God is judging those that are without. And he then goes on, he even talks about how we will judge the angels. Now the angels, the angels, God, God says that we will judge Israel. We will judge Israel. And right now his word is judging the world. 
with his saints, as it says in Revelation and in the epistle of Jude and throughout the scriptures. So um, he says that the unrighteous, so what are we? We are righteous. Our righteousness is Christ. We, have, we cover with the breastplate of righteousness, as uh, for Ephesians 6 says. So Christ is our righteousness. He's our covering. We depend on his righteousness, right? So we are imputed his righteousness because we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. We put no confidence in our flesh. So that's the grace and uh, the gospel of, of grace and mercy and spirit of truth with us, in us, whom the world cannot receive because what? They're without. They're outside the temple of the living God. They're not part of the temple of God, as 1 Corinthians 3 discusses. So he says, be not deceived. So those that are deceived, I believe, we see this time and again. The church tries to go back and get that old leaven, that leaven of the Pharisees, I believe, which the Pharisees are Israel, the Jews, which Jesus called serpents in Matthew 23, because they are of them that killed the prophets and they killed Jesus crucified. So they show that they are of that family, the cursed family that rejects God's spirit. The prophets spoke to them, that the, their ancestors, and they just keep passing this doctrine of sorceries and, and, um, and wickedness and malice and hatred and like Cain, who slew his brother, you know, because Abel's works were righteous and he offered the lamb. Well, during the time of Jesus, Jesus, they hated him and were envious of him because his works were righteous, just like Abel's. And he was the spotless, blemishless lamb of God, so he offered up the lamb. And we in our generation offer up the lamb of God, Jesus, for our sacrifice, God's lamb. And so our works are righteous because of faith, but those that are without, outside, the harlot and her children that are fornicating with her, um, and so that you see in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ, which the seed of Satan is in Greece. So you see the fornicators, the Greek fraternities and sororities God has shown me, which are spirits. These are spirits, beloved. We're, we don't battle flesh and blood. And the serpents. Jesus was calling them serpent spirits. Why? Because they were murderers, extortioners, liars, deceivers, whoremongers you know, stealing from God, <laughs> stealing God's fruit, uh, the wicked husbandman. And that's where you see in 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 5, verse 8, you see that he talks about malice and wickedness. Okay, so that wickedness, the wicked husbandman. So in chapter 6, uh, verses 9 through 11, you said he says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived. So we will inherit the kingdom of God. It gives God the pleasure to give us the kingdom of God. And Daniel even confirms that the saints will take the kingdom. So, and in verse 15 of chapter 6, you see he, him talking about the harlot. And in chapter 6, verse 12 through 14, right before that, he says, God will destroy both it and them. He's talking about the body the old man, so we don't, we're not part of the old man, beloved. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. I hope this is getting clear to you guys what he's talking about. You cannot be part of that old man, that old flesh. It's dead. It's buried with Christ. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. So when you look at chapter 6, verse 15, also look, because it's talking about the harlot, also look at Revelation 17 and Matthew 23. And then you could even look at the prophets, because the prophets are a foundation they also called Israel, Jerusalem, a harlot at many times. So they keep going into idolatry, adultery, fornicating with other gods, fornicating with the, the um, re rebellious uh, one that God said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning. They, they're, they're fornicating with him against their husbandman, God. <laughs> so, and, you know, he, that's why Jesus had to die, praise the Lord. So if you look at Revela or verse 16 in chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians, you see that he that is joined to an harlot is one body. I've done a video on this about joining to a harlot and being one with her. Okay, it talks about that. Those that are joined to a harlot are nigh unto burning and cursing and nigh unto burning. Okay, so in this chapter, in, in 1 Corinthians 15, the first six chapters, you see that your works will be tried with fire. Hallelujah. In Revelation uh, chapter 21, verse uh, tw uh, 24, the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Jesus is the light of the world, beloved. And those that are in darkness, they're the hate hateful ones, the harlot. And those that are